Micronutrient malnutrition is a widespread issue, affecting more than 2 billion people worldwide. Women of reproductive age are particularly vulnerable due to their greater need for essential vitamins and minerals. Poor nutrition before and during pregnancy and in the lactation period compromises the health of mothers and their infants. One way of improving women's micronutrient intake is by promoting the consumption of more diverse diets. In many resource-poor environments, however, access to quality diet is limited, with significant gaps between intakes and requirements for a range of essential micronutrients. Two major impediments to developing programmatic action have been the general scarcity of data on women's dietary patterns and micronutrient intakes, and the lack of adequate indicators. This is where MDDW comes in. MDDW stands for Minimum Dietary Diversity Indicator for Women of Reproductive Age. This is Estefania Custodio, a nutritionist and scientific researcher at the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. Minimum Dietary Diversity means the proportion of women in a certain population that are consuming five food groups out of a list of ten food groups. The MDDW indicator measures whether women 15 to 49 years of age have consumed at least five out of the ten predefined food groups the previous day or night. The food groups include grains, white roots and tubers and plantains, pulses, beans, peas and lentils, nuts and seeds, dairy, meat, poultry and fish, eggs, dark green leafy vegetables, other vitamin A rich fruits and vegetables, other vegetables, other fruits. Why do we need to collect this information? For several reasons. One of them is to give the gender focus to food consumption data and to see and analyze what women are eating and consuming within the household. The other one is because we believe in the thousand days approach that says that the first thousand days of a child are the most important ones in relation to the life cycle of malnutrition. And those thousand days stand for the nine months of pregnancy plus the two first years of life. So during the nine months of pregnancy, measuring and taking into account the diet of pregnant women, we know that has an effect on the newborn that will have also an effect in the malnutrition in the long term, stunting, etc. The MDDW indicator follows up on the Individual Dietary Diversity for Women indicator, or IDDS, which was based on nine food groups. The main difference is that with MDDW, we can assess the prevalence of women of reproductive age who are meeting the minimum dietary diversity. But is the new indicator perfect? So the strength is this uh, possibility that gives us to actually give the proportion of women that are reaching the MDDW. That is a strength when you want to measure policies or talk to give the political message. It's important to be able to, to give that proportion. That is a strength, not a weakness. And I think that is also very important to say is that it measures only one dimension of dietary adequacy. It measures the dietary diversity. And it's based also this dietary diversity to proxy the micronutrient adequacy of the diet. But it's not giving you information about the quantities consumed, not giving you information about the macronutrient consumption at all. Nutrition indicators are generally slow to take off. It can take years before they're widely adopted. Several countries have included the MDDW indicator in their national surveys, including Zimbabwe, Rwanda, Swaziland and Tajikistan. In other countries, including Chad, the EU is piloting the use of the indicator through the monitoring and evaluation framework of food security and nutrition action that it is funding. This will allow the indicator to be included in the national surveys in the long run. The European Commission is continuing its efforts and commitment in supporting the inclusion of the MDDW in more national surveys and evaluation programs, and more countries are expected to start using it in the near future.